Hi, Bruce the Accounting Guy again with you, and today is Bay of Debt Part 2. I know you're really excited about it. You don't have to worry, I have my cell phone turned off today, so no phone calls from Sonny. Now, we're talking about Bay of Debt again, and what I want you to do is I want you to take a look up here, and I want you to re realize, remember what the numbers are again. Let's say at this point I have receivables of $200,000 in my accounts receivable, and over here in my allowance account I have $12,000 which means that if I was to go through my subsidiary and look at every single person that owed me money and totaled them up, sure, I'd have $200,000 owed to me. And somehow, if I went through it, I pretty much could bet that I'm not going to collect that out of that $200,000, $12,000. And it's just an estimate, or as I call an accounting guesstimate, because it was based on either one of the two methods, percentage of sales or percentage of receivables. Now what happens during the year is, of course, this number goes up and down depending on my sales. As I make more sales on credit, I credit the accounts receivable. And as I collect my money, I mean I debit my accounts receivable. And as I collect my money, I credit my receivable and make it go down. And so this number does constantly go up or down. But this number here can also change. What changes it is when I go through my receivables every month and I see the same name on there all the time that has owed me money, month after month after month, and I'm getting tired of seeing that name pop up and help to add to this. Now, one of the things I could do is probably call Milo. He'd go over there and do his manipulation of, of uh, limbs, but I just am really not into that kind of business. So what I have to do instead is, is I have to remove that person. And I, you know, I'm tired of seeing their name pop up there. I mean, I know that they were doing business with me. I'm a little bit annoyed to seeing their name pop up month after month because they owe me that $500. And I know that they skipped town, that they ran off to some island with this young, nice person, woman. And, and there they are, this guy, and he's out there on the beach, and it's not me. Okay, I hope my wife doesn't watch this video. But anyway, so what's going to happen next is, is I've got to remove that guy's name, that person's name, because I'm tired of that 500 bucks popping up. When I do, I can't do the direct write-off method, as I said before. I don't reduce my receivable and record bad debt. I've already got that bad debt recorded because that person's number's in this $12,000. So what I really need to do is debit out that $500 out of here. And when I debit that $500 out of here, I'll also take it out of here, hence this entry right here. So on March 1st, I write that entry, and now all of a sudden what happens is... Is, is that I am now debiting the allowance account for 500 bucks. I'm removing it out of the allowance account, and I'm finally getting their receivable off the books. Of course, when I credit accounts receivable, I'm also crediting their subsidiary account, you know, the one with their particular name on it. And now when I run my, my report every month, their name won't pop up, okay? Um, and therefore, every time I write off an account, that's what would happen. If I did that up here, of course... Once I do that, this number now becomes $11,500. And when I take this number off, this number at that point is now $199,500. But I reduce these accounts by exactly the same amount. Okay, that's all I've really done. Now, if we come down to this illustration, here's what I've done. Before that write-off, I had, I had uh, accounts receivable of $200,000. But you can see after the write-off, I knocked it down to 199.5. The allowance account was 12,000 before I wrote that off, and now it's only 11,500. Funny thing though, when I look at the totals, the, the cash realizable value or the net realizable value is still exactly the same. And the point that I'm making this is when I write off an account, I don't really change my total net receivables because of the fact that my receivable and my allowance account are both going down by exactly the same amount. Writing off an account does not affect my income at all. It just affects my balance sheet numbers because I've, I'm taking it out of the allowance account, which, is, which was established with bad debt to begin with. Okay? Now, this number then during the course of the year, this allowance for doubtful accounts, is constantly going downward because during the year, I'm real, that's when I actually realize when some of these accounts will not be able to be collected upon. And you're going to say, well, what happens if you're right off more than 12000 That's okay. I just end up with a debit balance, and it means that my allowance balance was not high enough to begin with. 
and that when I start working with percentages at the end of this coming year to record my bad debt, I'm going to have to do what to my percentage? Make it higher. And if I really had a lot of this left at the end of the year, then maybe I need to take a look at my percentages and make my percentages lower. Okay, so in either case, okay, again, I'm always going to remove an account through the allowance account. So this account's constantly changing during the year. It's getting lower and lower. But it could also go back up. It could go back up if, well, let me tell you the scenario of that $500. I'm coming to work one day. It's around 7.30 in the morning. It's fairly early. I'm going up in the elevator to my office, and I realize I see this guy standing over in the corner with a hat on and sunglasses, and, and he's holding a cup of coffee, and he's kind of slouched in the corner, and I look at him, and I go, where? Is that you? And he kind of doesn't answer at first, and I finally realize it's where. I said, man, you're back in town. I said, uh, you know, and this was the guy that I wrote off the $500 on, just so you know. I said, is that you? And he finally answers me. He goes, yeah, it's me. And I go, oh, I said, uh, said the young lady got tired of uh, being with an older guy, and you ran out of money. And he goes, yeah, that's kind of what happened. And I said, oh, well, I said, you know, you ran off. You owed me 500 bucks. I said, you got that on you? He goes, no. And I said, well, does your wife know you're back in town? And as soon as I said that, his eyes kind of lit up, and he goes, well, I, I, I think I can come up with the $500 very quickly for you. So he comes up with the 500 bucks. And here's what happens then. When he gives me the $500, as soon as I get it, I took it and I put it right in my pocket. No, I didn't put it in my pocket. I thought about that, but being the honest business person that I am and wanting to give you guys some ethics, okay, we, gotta take, we need to take the $500 and put it right back into the business. So what do we do? Well, what we have to do is, is we have to do two journal entries. One, we do reestablish his account. Remember, we wiped it out. If we look, this was the entry we did to wipe it out, isn't it? This was the entry. We removed his account and took it right out of the allowance. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to put it right back in. We're going to reverse this entry. So let's come on down to here. This was on July 1st, and I ran into him. And sure enough, there it is again. I debited accounts receivable and credited the allowance for doubtful accounts. So like I flipped it right back in to where it was, OK? That is really good, OK? That's what we're doing. We're just flipping it right back into where it was. Then what I would do. He says, I take that money and bring it to the bank, put it in, which, of course, would mean I debit my cash, and now I remove his receivable. By doing this, reestablishing his account, and then showing the money come in, I have a trail. And we know that we always need to leave an audit trail. So that's why we did it in that fashion. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, what if I caught that guy in the elevator, and he didn't have $500 to give me, and he only had $200? Well, I guess what? My mama raised no fool. I would have taken the $200. And instead, I wouldn't have recorded the whole $500 like this. I would have only reestablished it for the $200. Okay, so whatever money I, <coughs> excuse me, whatever money I can get, that's what I reestablish it at, and then I put the money in. So this account, the allowance up here for doubtful accounts, this balance can move up and down during the course of the year. It moves down with a debit. Every time we remove an account, and any time we end up collecting money that we have already written off, we have to put it back in, like we did down here. Again, that account moves up and down. Then the account changes, of course, at the end of the year, depending if we use the percentage of sales or the percentage of receivables. That's all I have for you on bad debt. I'll see you again real soon.